Hello whiskey fans. So I've just reviewed this year's Lafroy Karchis, which is the Pedro Jimenez cask strength release. And you might think that this one here is one that I've had on the shelf for quite a while because this is the Lafroy Karchis release from 2019. But that's not actually true because when I was on the Lafroy website ordering this year's Karchis, I actually saw that this one was on there as well. And I thought that can't be, must be out of stock. But when I actually clicked on it, this one was actually still available. So, Karchis release from two years ago. So, really, hats off to Lefroy for making this available, either that they made enough in the first place, or that they've made some more, because we all appreciate availability. I am seeing a little bit of a pattern here, though, because this year's Lefroy Karchis, it's a third time in three years that we've had a triple matured release for Karchis. So last year's Karchis release, which was one of the first whiskies that I reviewed on YouTube, that was the Lefroy Karchis Port and Wine cask release. So that one was a mix of bourbon, second fill port bariques and red wine casks. This year's Karchis release is a mix of bourbon, quarter cask and PX sherry. And this whiskey that I'm having a look at today is a mix of bourbon, quarter cask and Oloroso sherry. So you might be thinking that this release, triple matured, it's got bourbon casks and quarter casks the same as this one, and the third stage is a sherry maturation. So you might think that this is going to be very similar to this year's release. But we're probably all aware that Pedro Jimenez casks PX sherry is a very, very dominant cask treatment, and it has a real tendency to change a whiskey very drastically, cover a lot of things up, and often not for the better, so we'll see. Oloroso Sherry, I'm sure we've all heard of that. What is Oloroso Sherry? So Oloroso is a dry sherry. It's much drier than Pedro Jimenez Sherry, much, much lower sugar content than PX Sherry, although Oloroso is still usually a little bit sweeter than uh, an Amontillado, or definitely quite a bit sweeter than your average Fino Sherry. Oloroso, like all sherry, is a fortified wine, and generally with Oloroso they're doing the fortification quite early in the maturation of the sherry. So what that does, by adding it at the start of the maturation, it tends to kill off the yeast floor very early in the maturation, leaving the, the Oloroso sherry to age in contact with the air, just like a whiskey. And I'm sure I don't need to tell you that Oloroso is widely used in the whiskey industry for maturation and finishing, and usually with good results. Oloroso sherry is used in the maturation of some of the best Scotch whiskies in the world. So let's take a look at the, the details that I've given us on this one. It is labelled as cask strength again. Again, as I pointed out on the video for the PX release, I'm not sure if all Karchis is always cask strength or if it's just high proof. It does state cask strength on the tube for this one, as it does on this 2019 release. It's bottled at 59.5% ABV, so that's slightly higher than the PX cask. So what we can figure out from that, personally I would say all it means is it's probably very unlikely to be a very old whiskey, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. As usual with Lefroy, I don't think there's any mention of whether this is coloured or not. It does say on the back about the usual blurb about how Karchis is friendship in Gaelic. It's matured, first maturation in ex-bourbon barrels, second maturation in quarter casks. So that's going to be a cask about half the size of an American standard barrel and almost certainly virgin oak. And then a third maturation in European oak casks previously used for Oloroso Sherry. Let's just have a quick look at the bottle. I'm a little bit annoyed at Lefroy over this stuff, by the way. These little leaflets, I'm sure everyone's seen, you get a unique number inside, and you can add that to your Lefroy account online to get, earn points that you can spend on things. And I think it's probably already happened now. Lefroy have changed the way that points work, and if you haven't used them, you're either about to lose them, or you probably have lost them. And that just seems a little bit unnecessary to me, because me personally, I built up a lot of points on my Lefroy account, and now through no real fault of my own, I'm going to lose those points that I've earned. So, as I said, quite annoyed about Lefroy for that one. So, having a look at the bottle, standard, traditional, darkish green glass that Lefroy always use, really nice label. 
original cask strength, triple wood. I did notice that it does say on the label and tube for this one, the most richly flavoured of all Scotch whiskies. Whereas, I think I've pointed this out in previous videos, on the current releases it says one of the most richly flavoured of all Scotch whiskies. So I'm guessing between 2019 and current day, that's around about the point where I'm guessing Lefroy got told off for implying or explicitly stating that their whiskey is stronger flavoured than anyone else's, which I don't think is true, and I'm glad that they've stopped saying that. Anyway, what else have we got on the label? No mention of colouring, and I don't think there's actually any mention of barrier filtration or this being non-chill filtered. It possibly is. A lot of special releases from Lefroy are now barrier filtered, but it doesn't say so on this one. So that's another little black mark against Lefroy for this release. What is worth pointing out at this point is that the Lefroy Karchis from 2019, the triple wood original cask strength, it is technically the same cask treatment as they apply to the standard 48% Lefroy triple wood. Now, triple wood is a whiskey that I really like. So this should essentially be identical to Lefroy triple wood, but a cask strength version. Let's see. Very, very tight corks from Lefroy at the moment. Every bottle of Lefroy that I've bought recently, you really have to struggle to get the cork out, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Keeps it safe. So this Lefroy Karchis 2019 Triple Wood, I'm going to be tasting it at cask strength. I have tried it with water. I think it swims fairly well, but I think it's quite drinkable, very pleasant at cask strength. No shame at all if you prefer it with a little bit of water, but if you have got a bottle of this or you can find a bottle of this, I would definitely recommend at least trying it at cask strength. So Lefroy Karchis Triple Wood on the nose. So definitely, definitely not as much sherry influence on the nose of this one as I was getting from the, the Karchis PX cask. It's much more complex and it's really the sort of sherry treatment that I'd like to see in a peated scotch. It doesn't overshadow everything else, it doesn't overpower, it leaves you with something that still retains most of the flavour that was there before the, the sherry treatment and it gives you just such a much more complex and balanced whisky. So on the nose, um, the first thing that you get for me personally is this note of something like smoked jam. And I'd love to know if anyone out there has actually tried smoked jam. Sounds like quite an unlikely experiment, but also quite a pleasant one. It's quite a saltiness to this Lefroig as well. Sort of salty smoke and salty smoked fish. And that smoke... I'm going to say that it's quite refined and quite a clean smokiness for a Lefroy. It's It really reminds me a little bit of sort of a mesquite spicy barbecue smoke. It's not quite your usual dirty, earthy, muddy, really phenolic, dirty peatiness that you get in some young Lefroigs. It's a little bit more mature and a little bit more refined than that, but still quite intense and really nice. So those are all flavours, obviously the smoked jam coming through from a combination of the peated malt and that Oloroso sherry cask, but all of those spicy wood smoke notes, a lot of that woodiness will be coming through from the quarter casks, because those virgin unused raw oak casks, especially being so small with such a large contact area with the cask, you're going to get lots of wood spice in there, and I'm already picking that up on the nose with some lovely toasted spicy oak notes. Also getting some really nice, and I think this is because that peat is that little bit more refined, some notes of coal tar soap. So it's not your really aggressive, dirty, almost industrial peatiness. It's more of a, a refined medicinal peat. I expect a lot of young people now have probably never used coal tar soap, but anyone that has that sort of carbolic coal tar smell. It's going to be very familiar and there's a little bit of it in this. 
also getting something that's a little bit curious, and this is something that I'll find develops over time, is there's a, a note in this whiskey of cola. So it's that blend that you get with, like, not your diet colas, but with your, your full-fat, full-sugar colas, that mix of the super sweet syrup and those spices, sort of gingery, cinnamon, vanilla notes that you get in something like original Coca-Cola. There's a little bit of that on the nose of this as well. I do wonder if this whiskey is older than your average bottle of Laphroaig Triple Wood, because it does seem that little bit more mature, more refined, a little bit more complex, and a little bit more gentle, but still with lots of power. So you're definitely getting something that I get on the nose of this a lot, is lots of maltiness. The actual base spirit has not been covered up by the cast treatment at all. It really holds up well. Saying that, I am getting a little bit of a wine gums note, and I, that's almost certainly from that Oloroso sherry, and lots of spices as well. And those spices probably coming from the quarter casks. Things like cinnamon, clove, a little bit of aniseed, a little bit of a, a cough sweet note. Let's see how it tastes. So lovely, I'm already going to say this is a very good Laphroaig, it's a very good Karchis release. I do wonder if that's why this one is still available on the Laphroaig website. I haven't really looked at other people's reactions to this, but I imagine it was probably a very popular, just like the Laphroaig Triple Wood at 48% is, I imagine this one was very popular with Laphroaig fans, and I wonder if they made some more batches to satisfy that demand. Getting lots of salty oak, also getting quite a bit of raw gingery oak, and I'm not always a huge fan of that, to be honest. I think that, much like a PX cask, if you have too much virgin oak in a whiskey, it does not mature a whiskey quicker to be in, have a large contact area with those small, very, very fresh raw oak casks. It does not add maturity, but it does add lots of oak influence and lots of spiciness. And I think in this one, that raw oak spiciness is just at the right level. It's not too much. It adds something extra and it's quite nice. Let's have another sip. Especially at cask strength. This is, this has a wonderful intensity. It's not overpowering, it's not hot, it's not immature, it's not harsh or raw when you drink this at full strength, if you're used to your full strength, cost strength whiskies. It just has a wonderful mouthfeel, wonderful intensity, wonderful syrupy coating mouthfeel. And that clove and aniseed that I mentioned before, that goes really well with that syrupy, oaky intensity. Also getting some rather Dunwich warehouse notes, some rather earthy, musty, dark chocolatey notes. So that's an interesting one for me, because I think that earthiness and the mustiness and the, the dark chocolate notes, to me, that seems like it's coming from a combination of the original Laphroaig malt in those bourbon casks being combined with that Oloroso. And that's something that you always want to see on a a finished or double or triple matured whiskey, when you get those casks and they work together and they blend together, it's always good to see evidence of every cask that's gone into a whiskey rather than things being lost in the mix. Also getting some more of that dry smoky peat, and again in my opinion it's more of a refined, almost a wood smoke rather than peatiness to this whiskey. Lots of well matured maltiness really does come across as either a little bit older than your average Laphroaig, or some very well-matured, hand-picked, curated casks. And also, on the end of the palette, I'm getting a little hint of licorice on there. And that licorice, again, I do wonder if that licorice is a combination of the sweet syrupiness you're getting from the Oloroso and those wood spices from the quarter casks, but either way, I really like it. As for the finish, I'm getting lots of notes of salty pea and wood spice. It's not an overly intense finish. It doesn't linger with those intense primary flavours for too long, but it is a long finish. So a question that I always have for things like this triple wood is which cask is dominant? 
because that's one of the things I really like about the, the 48% Lefroy Triple Wood. I like that it has that obvious sherry treatment, but it really maintains the medicinal, smoky, peaty and malty components of the whiskey as well. And I think that that's really rare. And that's one of the reasons that I really recommend the, the standard Laphroaig Triple Wood at 48%. On this one, I think it's much the same. In fact, I think it's possibly even better that they've toned down the influence of the sherry and the quarter casks a little bit to the point where all three cask treatments in this one I think they're perfectly balanced and that's exactly what I wanted to see. Compared to the triple wood I would say that this is actually not an identical cask strength version of the triple wood it is very much a different whiskey. I think that this whiskey is a little bit or quite a bit smoother than triple wood it's definitely more mature and I think there's more influence from the actual malt from the barley in this one compared to the standard triple wood. And I do wonder if that's because the casks that have gone into this have really been hand selected. They've been hand picked to some of the best casks that the Freug have got. As for a grade, I'm gonna go with a very high B plus on this one. So that's a much better grade than I gave to the, the Pedro Jimenez release. It's a good whiskey. I don't regret buying it, but it's not as good as you'd expect from Karchis. This one very much is. I'd say that this one is possibly a little bit behind last year's Port and Wine Cask release, but it's very, very close. And I'd say the same about the Lefroy 10 year old cask strength. That's really one of my absolute all time favourites with any Lefroy 10 year old cask strength releases. They're all fantastic whiskies, and I think if you are looking for the epitome of Lefroy, you really do need to go for the 10 year old cask strength. Speaking of which, Lefroy have really been spoiling us lately because look what else they've just released. <laughs> See you next time.